this is one of my absolute favorite times of the service that we have here. Uh, probably even more than teaching, uh, more than listening to the sermon, although I thoroughly enjoy both of those things. But I enjoy this time because I, this is the time that I most often hear the gospel. And from so many of you, as you come and express uh, the gospel and the simple gospel, and uh, while we remember this time, and remember Christ, what is the nature of gospel? Not the gospel, but gospel as principle, as what is the nature of it? The Apostle Paul makes a distinction in Galatians, uh, elsewhere in Romans, and uh, it's made elsewhere in the New Testament. Um, the early Protestant, he, he makes this between law and promise. The early Protestants made the same distinction between what they called law and gospel. It is not that the Old Testament is law and the New Testament is gospel, as a lot in the early church thought, nor is the gospel a new and better law, as a lot in the medieval church thought. No, there is gospel and law in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, existing side by side. Law is similar to that which is given at Sinai. It makes commands and acts as a mirror to show us our true selves. It condemns because of our inability to live up to its standards, whether spirit-enabled or not. On the other hand, gospel is similar to that by which Abraham receives a promise, he believes, and is declared righteous. Now there is law and gospel in the New Testament as well. It's the same principle. Law is that which commands. It is something to do, something to be done by us. While gospel is an offer, something done for us, something we receive. We certainly need both law and gospel to be healthy Christians, but they ought not be mixed up. For example, if I take a passage that is gospel and make it into something to do, then I have distorted the word of God. Just like Abraham took the promise of God and made it into something that he would do with Hagar. We cannot do without the gospel, and the gospel is even our motivation for upholding the law, uh, for commending the law. And so I hear this gospel from so many of you during this time. But if it is not enough to be heard, then our Lord and Savior gives us this time that we can see the gospel too with our eyes. I can see it here in the Lord's Supper. Don't you? For what did you bring to this time? Did you bring the cup that you received or the bread that you received? No, you brought yourself, uh, your sinful self that is, uh, not your righteous self. God help us if we think that we come to this time part to partake of Christ because we deserve it. But we simply receive Christ. We come as beggars to receive him. It's as if he says to us here, I have given myself for you. I take it. And so we do by faith. And what is faith uh, but receiving and resting in what has been done for us? The obedience of another that we, uh, that we partake in who did live to the standards of the law. That's gospel. I have another thought for today, though. When you are discussing the faith with people, a lot of times the question will come up of the necessity of church, whether it is actually necessary for a Christian to go to church. Um, and some just will flat out say that it's, it's not necessary for me to go to church to be a Christian. Um, and so we can remember this time now um, and what we're doing here uh, let this time be a reminder to you see God has not only given us faith that is necessary to be saved to believe in Christ and be saved but he has also given us his word and the sacraments in order to nourish our faith as they have been called by Protestants means of grace Come, he says, eat and drink of me and have your fill. Be nourished in your faith. My incarnation, death, and resurrection are all for you. I give to you freely. And so we do, not by simply eating and drinking uh, of the bread and the cup, 
but by receiving them in faith, remembering the one who gave himself for us so that we might have life, life that comes by faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, you have given us all. Help us only to hear it and to see it. We thank you for this time in which you condescend to us and communicate yourself to us in grace. Show us more of Christ as he is clothed in his gospel. We pray in his name. Amen. During this time, we also have offering. Uh, there are a number of ways that you can do that. We, we've moved the box to the back corner of this room. Uh, if you have something that you want to give there, uh, there's a, th a way I think you can text to give too. Is that right? Um, maybe online. I know on the website, on our website, there's a way that you can give online too. One of the nice things about that, uh, and that's the way that uh, me and Aaron have, have chosen continually to give, is that. Uh, we don't have to wait till Sunday to do it. Uh, at any time throughout the week, uh, when we're f just feeling thankful, uh, we, we we can go on there and do that at any time. Um, and so this is a way that we uh, give back. Uh, for what do we have that we have not received first? Let's pray. Holy Father, God, we thank you uh, for this time. Uh, we thank you for uh, this place and these people. Uh, we come together to worship you. Uh, we, we ask now that you make your presence known through the rest of this service, through the preaching of your word. Uh, we pray it in Christ's name. Would you stand and sing this last song with us? God sent his son They called him Jesus
God, thank you. Thank you so much for that promise of holding the future. Thank you so much for sending your son. Lord, I pray that as Andy comes and delivers the message today, that our hearts and our ears would be open to your spirit, Lord. It's in your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. 